Hey, what's going on guys? It's Sudith here again for another part of the Dark Souls 3 Let's Play slash tutorial. Sorry about that. My dog uh, decided she wanted to play with her loudest toy right now. But we just killed Pontiff Sullivan. Um, or at least that's what we should have just done because I was standing in this boss room. I don't remember PvPing intentionally. Now, I've been torn. Whether or not I should advance through this area to kill um, Aldrich, or whether I would suggest you guys go to the Consumed King's Garden. But since I'm under the assumption that you probably consider the Dancer harder than Pontiff, we're going to continue. Um, the issue I also had with this area was playing on or offline, and I think I've decided to play offline while I show you guys where everything is. And then we'll go online and I'll do a run through. That way I can show you just how often and you'll get invaded here. Maybe we'll get some some invasion wins as well. There is a meta for PvP guys, so I've been making this character with the 125 to 143 soul meta in mind. But there is one around the 50 to 60 mark because um, you'll be able to access most of the game pretty comfortably and you'll be able to fight here at Pontiff. So you can have a decent build going at 60 for sure. Um, I just don't personally prefer the lower levels. I like that soul level 125 where everybody has a really defined build that's very strong. But you have a little bit of freedom. Um, as to where with builds at level 60 you don't really get that same freedom. Unless you're like, I have 18 faith just for TOD and I have just enough intelligence to use Karthus Flame Arc on my sword, that type of stuff. We're just gonna kill these giants. Yeah, cause that guy and his buddy. Let's bring him over here. I don't like being blasted with the fire while I beat these guys up. And the closer you are to the wall, the harder it's gonna be for them to shoot you. It's also a tip if you're PvPing around here. Like, if you're the, uh, if you're like a blue or a purple, maybe, something that might get attacked by those enemies. Or you're the host, and you've been invaded. If you stick close to this wall, then they won't blast you with fire. I'm just gonna swing. Yep, I'm gonna do it again. Aw. Unfortunate. What a fool. I saw that coming a mile away. Did you guys see me swap to the parry shield just for that? Embarrassing. <laughs> Hopefully the people we fight can be as inept as these NPCs and we'll really be having a good time. I do think that all the items on this field are worth grabbing. See, that's the reason we want to avoid those fireballs. Let's bring that giant a little closer. Hey, buddy. Fine. I'll fight you out here. Now we better block. I knew it. <laughs> I knew that fireball would be coming. Man, they won't let me kill this giant. Let's grab that. Oh, I missed it. Give me a second. We'll grab it now. Stop that. We'll grab this shard. We're going to kill those fire guys. I don't really think it's that worthwhile to go up there. But we will. Oh, thought I could squeeze through there. There's also some enemies hiding back here. I believe there's an item. Wow, they hit kind of hard. I think post Pontiff is where Dark Souls 3 really starts, honestly. Although I'm not certain I would consider any difficult, um, all, any area all that difficult until like Lothar Castle Grand Archives. But this area can be trying, mainly due to the people here. We'll grab that Dark Stone play ring. Oh wow, I have 52,000 souls. Eh, it's totally fine. Hmm. I don't know if I want to take on both the Sullivan Beasts with all 52k. Eh, screw it. You guys already saw me lose 40k earlier in the run. When I'm this ahead on levels, I really don't care what happens. At least I feel ahead. This might be the recommended level, and I recommend you guys be this level if it's your first time, or if you're just playing casually. I don't usually spend this much time um, making a character. But I'm trying to show you guys the way to do this. I find it easier, so if you're farming for this Covenant item because you don't want to do Pontiff PvP, the tall boys have twice the chance of dropping it than the skinny ones do. I usually just take care of the tall ones first. The little guys have less health, you can usually one-shot them. Especially if you're a strength build. 
Yeah, we ate uh, we ate so many fireballs. We're gonna take on the Sullivan Beast anyways. Screw it. There's a ring we want from them, as well as a bonfire and access to a covenant. I missed an item. Let's grab that. And as you see, I still have the cat ring on. So if I shield, see that little cat underneath my stamina bar? And that little silver serpent is a silver serpent, and those three green arrows are my Calorinthi ring. So if you just come in here, guys, and you hit this, then you'll gain access to down here where the two Sullivan Beasts are. This is going to be rather difficult. I would consider these two Sullivan Beasts at the same time to be much harder than Pontiff Sullivan. So, um, we want to draw the one out. Is this human dregs? Okay. Ah, oh, wonderful, guys. We pissed them both off. Hmm. Let's see if one of them will go away, maybe. Wow, you're so tall. Mm. Doesn't look like they're gonna go away, guys. We really only want to fight one of these things at a time. Eh, fuck it. Nice, that should be one dead. Yeah, all according to plan, guys. I'm over here talking these guys up. There's some chumps. This fight can be very difficult, though, guys. Don't be surprised if you die to these Sullivan Beasts. There's another ring we're actually going to use. So the Ring of Favor and Protection will increase your stamina, HP, and maximum equip, I think, by about 5% each. I'm just going to leave that on at all times now. Hmm. What do I think this is? I actually have no idea. Oh, a deep gem. Wonderful. All right, and here's the bonfire. And that over there is Archdeacon McDonald, and you can pray to him and you'll join his covenant of uh, dickheads who invade around here. I have no particularly beef or particular beef against the Aldrich Faithfuls. They're just garbage teammates and usually embarrassing invaders. Sometimes there are some good faithfuls. But usually the scary invaders here are the reds, not the blues. Really, the scary part of Pontiff is being an invader, because you're so likely to run into three-man squads, so... I guess you'll learn to get good or lose. Although, if you lose to more than one person, that does not mean you're bad. And even if you lose to one person, they might just be cracked. Now there's an item over here. We're going to grab. Excellent. So, how many Titanite scales are we up to now? Seven. You could have a decently progressed boss weapon. Um, it wouldn't be close to maxed out or anything, but we have been doing our best to kill the ravenous crystal lizards. See, if you kill the dancer, you gain access to chunks in Lothar Castle like I showed you so early, because even post-Pontiff, we're still getting large shards. So those are the Easterner's Ashes. It's going to let you buy Shiva's set from Dark Souls 1. There's a couple other things it allows. And these are the An Orlando Archers discount version. These guys are dog shit. They don't compare. Not that the original An Orlando Archers were even that bad. I think that's probably the most overhyped, difficult portion of Dark Souls 1. These guys actually, you know what, maybe worse. Because you actually have to fight more of these archers. You just have to parry the one in Dark Souls 1. See what I mean? Like, I got shot from over there. I didn't even know there was an archer over there. And I've been through here like a million... Get out. Get out of here. <laughs> I've been through here like a million times. We will go down that way and open up that shortcut as well. There's a knight hiding in this corner as well. Dude, look. We are bisected by a great arrow right now. Really? I thought the two would be enough. There's nothing over here, but I like to hide here sometimes. <laughs> just to mess with people. You can get the jump on a good group of three by doing something like this. And you just hide <laughs> over in the corner. <laughs> hey, even the odds any way you can, guys. Ah. 
Oh, this is the attack that you don't want to fall down to. If he starts doing that slam, you want to roll, guys. Because if you're on the ground when that Silver Knight starts that, it's not going to stop until you're out of its range. Man, these guys drop Titanite shards like crazy, so you should kill these when you're going through here. Oh, a spear one. How unfortunate. That wasn't a backstab. I can't be the only person who kind of felt like that should have been. I'll kick you. Oh, no. I hate the spear, guys. I will admit, this is an enemy that gives me some trouble. I'm just gonna swing. Ah! But you couldn't just fall off from the backstab? That would have been so much cooler. Oh, holy cow, guys. Using our shield of want and killing those Sullivan beasts, we got another 50,000 souls. <laughs> Excellent. I'll show you how to spend 100,000. That's probably like five levels. No, not even. It'll be like three or four. But we'll open up this shortcut. Now I'll go back to Firelink. And then I... Hmm, do I want to run through here, Embered? I mean, the only thing that would be showing you is PvP. And you could always learn PvP from someone else. Remember, these guys are back because we rested at the waterway. But we're going to grab uh, some stuff from the top rafters here. I also did not roll there. Like, intentionally, at least. I saw that my character rolled, but... I had no intention of rolling. Excuse, excuse me? Did you guys see that? That fireball went past me by, like, 10 feet, and then I took damage from it anyways. How strange. We don't have a talisman, do we? Because this is a mimic. Nope. All right, guys, beat up a Mimic. I don't need a buff. It's just a Mimic. At this point in the game, they're a lot less dangerous because you have enough health that their grab's not going to do anything crazy. You wish. <laughs> awesome. Golden Ritual Spear. What a unique weapon. Let's check that out. A ritual spear presented to the Dark Moon Knights before Sullivan claimed the title of Pontiff. Can be used as a staff. Oh, okay, cool. I've never used that weapon. I thought there was a Titanite Lizard up here, in all honesty. Maybe I missed him. But I also really like these uh, stained glass windows up here. These round ones. Aren't they nice? Just thought I'd take the time to show you guys that. And then here's a shortcut back. There's that Lizard. That's a shortcut back down to the bonfire. So you can use that to farm those deacons if you're having trouble uh, connecting people to th through the Pontiff Covenant. And you need, like, a great soul drag for your plat. Otherwise, I mean, who cares? Pontiff can be fun, but... A lot of times... Oh, Simple Gem, awesome. That was worth coming over here. We won't be using it, but anybody who's using um, an int build may use that for... You know, one of their weapons. Maybe they're offhand or something. We've got the cat ring, though, so we're just going to do this. Now let's head back to Firelink. Man, I can't believe we uh, basically killed both those Sullivan beasts without so much as a hitch. I actually would genuinely say, out of all the bosses I've fought so far in this playthrough, I would consider those two Sullivan Bees scarier than any of them. Except for maybe Yorm with no Storm Ruler. Had Sigurd not been here, that definitely would have been the hardest fight. Welcome home, I should speak very well. Then take Just because it would be like a war of attrition, though. I don't think Yorm's moveset is that difficult. Alright, what do we want? I actually don't want a Great Shield at the very moment. We'll probably get one before either of the DLCs, guys. I've decided I'm going to do those after the uh, Four Lords, but before Soul of Cinder. Then we'll do Soul of Cinder and finish with Gale as our last boss. So I don't need to block that bad. You know, it never hurts to do some Vigor and some Endurance. So we'll do two Vigor and one... Oh, nice. We're level, six. we're level 69, guys. We're also close to leveling up. Yeah, we're only a thousand off. Let's pop a Soul Consumable. I think this is like 3k, though. It's going to be too much. Eight... Oh my gosh. I'm gonna buy some stuff too, guys. I didn't expect to get 8k souls from that. 
What do you sell, old lady? Oh, we have uh, Xanthus or Easterner ashes Passing to give her, by the way, guys. And I'll show you the set that that grants access to. Let this ash bestow nourishment. I only hope these new wares content thee. <laughs> All right, so here it is, Shiva the East Armor. It's kind of cool. You know, I kind of like Shiva's stuff. The best here is still obviously Tarkas. I'm wearing the Dancer's set right now, guys, so this chess piece. Oh, we get Lawtrex armor now? I really like Lawtrex armor, guys. I once did a cosplay of Lawtrex where I, like, handmade all the armor. It was quite cool. I mean, cosplay itself isn't quite cool, but that one was. And we get the Xanthus overcoat um, from our boy, our buddy Hazel. Not our boy, I suppose. She's a girl. At least to the best of my knowledge. Hazel's gear is kind of cool. Yeah, and that... Oh, and uh, the wood grain ring, I bet. Let's scroll back to rings. Yep. Ashen but we don't need the wood grain ring. No, Nothing really breaks in Dark Souls 3. That's like a myth. Um, do we have any key items we need to be turning in? Uh, no. We can put Yorm's skull up on our throne, though. Normally, I wait to do all of them until the end, but let's just do them as we go. It'll be nice little markers for us. Oh, Hawkwood's not here. Well, then let me check. Hawkwood might be doing his unique dialogue I told you guys you can catch sometimes. Or he might have left Firelink Shrine. It all depends on if he's out here and if Andre gives us special dialogue. Because Hawkwood actually becomes a bit of like a mini boss fight at one point. Spoilers, guys. We will be seeing that, though. But we're just going to parry him when we do it, because he's going to try to spin to win on us. Man, even with a PS5, we're look at how long we're stuck here, guys. So if you remember where I killed that dog last time, um, you go out left from the front door of Firelink Shrine. Oh, Hawkwood's already left, maybe. He's left us an item. Hawkwood shield. So, I suppose after you talk to the Abyss Watchers is when he does that. Alright. Shield that belonged to Hawkwood, a deserter from the Undead Legion. The unique swordsmanship of the Watchers does not normally allow for the use of shields. The unique swordsmanship of the Watchers would not allow such a shield. Hawkwood's very possession of it was tale of his defeat. So, Hawkwood was a wannabe Watcher. Um, he's an edgelord. The Watchers are cool, definitely, and if we'd got to see the cutscene, you'd probably think they're a bit cooler. But they're not that cool. Hawkwood's kind of bugging. Alright, now I'll take you guys back to the Water Reserve, which is a little bit of backtracking since we killed those knights at the top. But I'll be showing you how to get into An Orlando, and how to access the Dark Moon Blades. Then, before I kill Aldrich... Personally, I've been delaying um, Osiris, Champion Gundir, uh, the Ancient Wyvern, and the Nameless King for quite a while, and I would normally get those fights done before Aldrich. But, after some thinking, I think we're going to go ahead and do Osiris the way I'd like to do it anyways. Plus, Osiris is a cool fight. Um, Gundir has a cool fight. Sorry this area is taking 20 minutes. I could have been sprinting to the top of this ladder. But, I mean, post-pontiff is always going to be like this, guys. It's always going to be an area that if you want to grab everything, it's going to take probably close to a half hour. Especially if you're online, because you're going to be basically constantly invaded. And we're going to leave Pontiff alive partially for that reason. I'm hoping maybe um, when we get a little closer to like that level 90, if we can do that in New Game. Normally it takes me New Game and New Game Plus to reach level 100. Uh, I usually finish New Game around the level we're at right now, guys. Wait, why am I fighting these guys? I already showed you that once. I guess so I don't get blasted like that. Damn, right through my elbow. That's going to cause the tendonitis some problems. We're just going to ignore that dude. If he chooses to follow us, he can die. Yeah, that's what I thought. 
Then we're going to come over here, actually, real quick. There you go. Just like in Dark Souls 1. This is where Gwendolyn had his boss, or their boss fight. Alright, and then we're going to grab the brass armor, which is pretty cool. It's, uh, the Dark Souls 1 Dark Moon Knight S. If you know who that is, that's her armor. There's going to be the gender reversal ring in here. And if you're doing Henri, you'll use this room for something else. Um, but that quest line is boring to me, so I'm not doing it. This is going to let you perform gender actions of the reverse sex, which I think means change like one or two emotes. Hey. It doesn't even change your hey. What a worthless ring. But it is in there, guys, if you were curious. We're going to run over, grab the uh, Anne Orlando bonfire, grab the Dark Moon bonfire, and then uh, I will end this episode. And probably the next episode, guys, we'll be back in the dancer's room, um, headed up to go grab the stuff from Osiris's area and kill Osiris. Mm, but if we... I really like the idea of saving Aldrich so we can do some PvP on this file without going into New Game Plus. Yeah, let's save Aldrich, guys. We will continue with the plan of killing Osiris. We will need to kill Aldrich before we do Twin Princes, but that's alright. So we're just going to come up here. Also, you can't be um, parried or parried and reposted or backstabbed on that or, uh, this huge staircase here and then if you take off from this and just run left you'll usually meet up with it right about the time it comes here <laughs> I love the way you stall out there now if you're farming for dark moon blade you're going to want to do it from this bonfire so you'll walk up You'll roll that Spear Knight's Lunge, backstab it, and then you'll parry the shield one, and you'll do that on repeat. But we're going to go grab um, the Dark Moon Blade. Not uh, the spell itself, but the Covenant. There's an invisible bridge here, guys. Just trust. Just run straight. You don't even have to be that straight. And then just walk off. Alright, and I'll be talking to the Covenant leader here, because she has some lore, and we'll see what she has to say. Name thyself, stranger. I am Yorshka, captain of the Dark Moon Knights. What beckoned thee to such a place? Thou thinks too. Very well. Captain to this knightless company I remain. I will grant thee purpose. Thou's journeyed far. Hear my voice. If thou shalt swear by the covenant to become a shadow of Father Gwyn and Sister Guinevere, a blade that shall hunt the foes of our lords, then I place thee under the aegis and the power of the Dark Moon. She's got her bare feet out, just like that Priscilla. She's got a dragon tail. Moon. I'm pretty sure she's supposed to be a the descendant of Priscilla of somehow, guys. Or another dragonkin or something. Swear There's something up with her. And face thy solemn duty. Oh. Good blade of the Dark Moon. Welcome home. If I can provide thee succor, only tell me how. Long ago, our father Gwyn, lamenting the waning of the fire, became cinder of his own will. Now, the fire is linked by the champions who have come in his stead. Such is the will of father and the gods. And so the Dark Moon Knights took arms to watch over those who link the fire but long ago, our company lost its last proper knight. The Dark Moon Knight S. Only its covenant was preserved to this day. Until the time of thy visit. 
Erdem taketh many forms, indeed. Off so soon, may the dark... Alright guys, there's our lore dump. There's Yorshka as well. This is Yorshka's church. I'll actually end the episode here. Um, and by the way, we were able to get in because of this emote, which we got for helping Cirrus. So, don't forget about that, guys. Um, you get it fairly early, though. You don't really have to commit much to her to get it. But, um, in the next episode, I'm going to drop down this and show you guys how to grab all the items. And then we will head over to the Dancer's Bonfire, and I'll show you how to find Osiris, the Consumed King, and his garden. But that's going to be it for this part, guys. So I'll see you in the next one.